When you look at Mark's situation, he will have done a, a pre-op assessment. Uh, his, his, his GP will have referred him for the operation. Does it really save any time and money, really, because he's going to have to do another pre-op assessment? His GP is going to have to prescribe him all sorts of drugs, for goodness sake, and whatever. What does this really achieve, postponing these operations? Well, there's got to be a cut-off. I mean, look, the, the NHS has got 100,000 beds. When they're full, they're full. Mm. Mm. Uh, and, and it's not elastic. About 40% of the 100,000 beds are used for uh, elective procedures, like we've just heard on new hips or knees and that kind of thing. What has happened in the past is that people haven't had their operations cancelled. They thought they could go in, and with, there were horrible stories where people have turned up at the hospital and have been told, sorry, no bed, go home, or the night before they've had a text, no bed, go home. What the emergency planning panel have tried to do this year is to say, look, we are not going to do any operations in January because we need the surgical beds for very sick medical patients. And they, so they've given people warning in advance. Now, wherever you do a cutoff, you'll get stories like this. And it's not great and no one is saying it is. Uh, it's it's cross-making, irritating, bewildering, very painful, I'm sure, and discomfort. But... What but do you do? The whole thing's a mess. Yes, yeah. And it's not as if you couldn't have predicted this is all going to happen. Well, that, is it something I mean, that's, that's solvable with money? That, the interesting thing is that they've been planning since June. All this was forecast. This, the, the flu that's come in from, from Australia this year is a horrendous, wreaked havoc in Australia. And it will wreak havoc here. Uh, it's not over. This is not over. I mean, mm. in January and February, it will get really bad. And then mm. if the staff start getting the flu, yes. we're in real trouble. But it's not, Nick, is it? It's not just, oh, you know, it's the flu epidemic and that's why. I mean, we all know the National Health Service has been in trouble for quite yes. some time and yes. it seems to be getting worse. But what is the answer? We can all sit here saying, isn't it terrible? And people like Mark, who's had his yep. operation cancelled. Is it purely funding? I mean, no. do we, is, is, does it need a massive cash injection? Yeah, I think it does. Uh, well, not just cash. And I think what we need to say, first of all, is the incredible work that the nurses, the clinicians, the doctors mm. are doing under extraordinary circumstances. So praise the Lord for them. But it's not... I mean, this is... A, remember, we give them more than £2 billion a week to the health service. So it's not just simply a question of cash. This was invented 70 years ago. Now, the way we drive our cars, the way we use our cookers, the way we fly an aircraft, that's changed over 70 years. We have to look to change the model of the NHS. I had a, a health minister on my show today, for a former Lib Dem health minister, who said he's just turned 60, now he's getting free prescriptions. He makes £75,000 a year as an MP. That yeah. needs to stop. We also oh. need to crack down. We need to crack down on missed appointments. Eight million missed appointments. Yes, there's got yes, to be responsibility, responsibility from, from us individual as well. Like the individuals. Thing, Roy? Roy, remember, Ruth, I want to make a point here about something. Roy, I could not believe this. In Belfast, over Christmas, I develop a bit of a cold sore, right? I go to the pharmacist and I say, do you have any stuff for cold sore? And they say, yes, indeed, here it is, did a, did a one pound eight or whatever. And I said, thank you very much. And they said, you know you can claim that back under our minor ailments programme. I nearly fainted. I could get, if I have diarrhoea, if I have a sore throat, if I've got a headache, if I've got a cold sore, where is the individual responsibility, responsibility. not to turn up at A&E, not to go in there and sponge off absolutely everything for everybody? It's incredible. I, I, I agree, and I don't think you'd find anyone working in the NHS that would disagree with you. But these are not decisions for the NHS. These yes. are political decisions. Yeah. The, you know, the minister that you interviewed yeah. this morning, uh, who was a, a great minister, who did a lot of work in, in mental health, as I remember. But, yeah. you know, you have to get, if I may say, not being disrespectful <laughs> to Norman, but, you know, you need to get the yeah, Hunt or, or on the, on the yeah. Jeremy Hunt and say, to him, put these things to him because clearly, I mean, look, it, it, there are a million people looked after every day in the NHS. There are 1.4 million people working in the health service. There is waste, of course, there is, and there are stupid things going on. But, but if I may just point, finish the point, yeah, the point is this that the, in the longer run, We've had seven years of flatline funding in the NHS. Yeah, no, prospect of, yeah. no prospect of getting back to the European average. We're below yes. Estonia but in Nick's our funding. But Nick's point about reinventing what yes, was on, I like A&E. A and &E is not fit for purpose. No, that is... You're using it like a GP. No, that isn't true. No, that no, isn't true. To no, say... No, to say A&E... No, 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 no. To say no, A&E is not... If I need a flat tyre from a car, I go to a, a, a unit that will, will replace my tyres. In A&E, you turn up with anything and everything. You should be able to go window one, broken leg, 
legs, window two appendix, window well, three. Well, I don't know when you were last in at any. I, I, I was, but, I'll tell you when I was in it, mate, just before Christmas so well, it was, I think when my mother had to be in a corridor. I think you'll find that the triaging now that's done in A&E uh, uh, does makes that approach, and a lot, most hospitals now have GPs in A&E, so the first triage is done by then. Look, I, yeah, but there's I, so many uh, easy fixes, Roy, yeah, but like it, health tourism. There are some, these guys will know, I'm sure you well, know. Well, then you talk to the politicians. At, yeah, you present yourself at a hospital in the US, you don't get past the word go unless you give your credit card. Sure. Here we lose, and by its very nature, we'll never know. But it is tens of millions of pounds. In one instance, £500,000 for a pregnancy for a woman from Nigeria. Thank God the babies were born, marvellous, we all celebrate that. But we can't keep on going there. When we've got Elderly people who've paid taxes for five decades are stuck on a trolley. But and we go, and we them. go round and round and round with these stories, and and there isn't anyone that would disagree with them. The issue is, what do you do about it? Now, it's not within the gift of the NHS no. to resolve these issues. If you they want, could spend to, better though. If you want, to, well, probably. But if you want to stop people, hundred managers making more it, than the it, prime minister. If you want to stop people coming in to the NHS and taking advantage of it, you have to make a simple way for the NHS to know people are entitled to it. Mm. So what? Do you do? Right, do, we, do you want to give them too a, much off? Do you want to give them? A, hang on. Do you want to give them an identity card? Do you want to do that? Because how else do you do a doctor? Now you're doctor talking like a politician. If you want to get a vote, you just say yeah. That's the end. It says you should be able to do everything for everybody. I haven't said that. Because, no, I'm saying no politician stands up and says you should be responsible yourself. Why? Because it lose, lose them votes. A vote. Well, yeah. that's yeah. I, and I think we agree on that point. Yeah.